everyone to get your song books. Turn to page 150. <coughs> Stand and sing with the choir. My faith has found a resting place. Everyone turn to 150 and stand and sing with us, please. My faith has found a resting place, not in device nor creed. I trust the ever-living one, his plans for me. Treadwick, can you pray for us, please? Our Father, we thank you, Lord, again for another opportunity and privilege that you've given us that we might come together again in this house to worship you. We thank you, Father. We was just listening to the song about Calvary. We want to thank you, Father, for yourself and because you are our God. And then we want to thank you for your Son. Praise you because you're God. And Give you thanks because you're of your son that came to, came to this earth, left everything that he had to come and to hang and to die for us on the cross of Calvary. Then I'm so glad on the third and appointed day that he resurrected from the dead. And we base our salvation on the fact that he has resurrected and the blood has been taken to the mercy seat. And Father, we thank you so much for that. You made the way for us. You did it all. And Father, we want to thank you for those that have gathered here tonight. We pray that you'd bless Father, we ask you, Lord, that you'd help us that would be obedient to the Spirit of God tonight. Bless our preacher, Father, as he stands this evening. Bless us singing. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. The choir's going to sing for us.
we'll ask you to stand again the second time and let's stand and sing together 262 with the choir. Jesus is the light of the world. The light of the world is Jesus. 262. The whole world was lost in the darkness of sin. The light of the world is Jesus. Like sunshine at noonday, his glory shone in. thankful that you're at Mount Pisgah Baptist Church tonight. I appreciate so much you coming and being faithful. Thank you so much for being here. I'd rather be here than in jail. What about you? Uh, awful good. <laughs> well, in jail, you don't have to have a lawyer like Joey Van Hook to get you out, <laughs> keep you in. <laughs> That's where I first met Joy when we had our missions work at the jails. I met Joy there. And <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> we're glad you all are visiting with us, though. We sure are. All right, we have several things that we're going to do tonight. We'll do them as quick as we can and uh, as informative as we can that you'll know what's going on. Brother HB's got something he needs to tell you, please. HB. Well, I'm excited tonight for all you print shop workers. We have worked Tuesday morning, so please come, okay? That's good. <laughs> They're putting together uh, 15,000 whole Bibles starting Tuesday. Uh, come and help us. All right. Tom? We're just excited HB did something. Amen? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Payback. <laughs> All right. Getting to some more important things. Uh, let me let you... 
some bigger things. Let me let you know that uh, there'll be a bus breakfast this uh, on November the 30th. It's a very, very important bus breakfast. Meet at the print shop at 9.30. All of you that are involved in the bus ministry, if you visit, whatever, whatever the case may be, drive, all of it, Wednesday nights, Sundays, uh, please see me uh, if you cannot be there because I've got to give you the information. Otherwise, we'll meet you up there uh, that Saturday, November 30th. If you're interested in the bus ministry, we, we certainly have room for you. Please uh, consider being involved in our bus ministry and uh, let us reach, help us reach people for Christ, and that would be a good thing. Also, if you are planning on going to the winter retreat, I need to see you, uh, the teenagers, 7th through 12th grade, right over here by the, on the piano side of the room. This morning, some of you uh, forgot or whatever, and that's fine, but I'll look, I'll look for you this evening right after, after the service on this side of the auditorium, my left, your right. Okay, let me give you the uh, results of our children's uh, campaign as of uh, this morning. Uh, first place in the Army is still Miss Juanita Bowman. Would you please stand, Miss Bowman? All right. right. Remain standing. And in the Navy, uh, the uh, first place is Miss Betty Phillips. If you'll stand. Good. Thank you. And then uh, Miss Claudia Patterson is in the Air Force, first place. And then um, in the uh, Marines, we have Larry Craze in first place. So if you'll stand. All right. All right. And then uh, the uh, Commander in Chief this week is again Miss Juanita Bowman. So if you'll give him a hand, I okay, appreciate Juanita. it. We are having a good time with our Sunday School campaign concerning our, the military, and uh, we're soldiers in the Army trying to march forward and do things. Our Sunday School attendance has been up, our morning attendance has been up, and we're thankful for God's continued blessings upon us. Now I'm going to tell you about the adults uh, program. Uh, we have three groups as well, the Marines, the Navy, the Air Force, the Army. In the Marines group, the first place is uh, General Etta Bourne. Over here, stand just up and down, if you would please, for me, if you can do that, good, all right, good. <laughs> we'll give them all a hand just a minute, all right. Sergeant Jack Campbell, way back there in the back, and Private Ronnie Wright again, Private Wright, <laughs> good to see you. In the Navy, now we know these aren't the proper terms for these folks, but we're, we've done this to keep it all together. In the Navy, uh, General Joe Whitby. All right, Brother Joe. All right, good. And Sergeant Terry Copeland. Right, right Brother Copeland. And Private uh, James Cox. <laughs> Brother Cox, still a private, buddy. You've got one more week to go, all right? In the Air Force, we have General Garvin Walsh. <clears throat> That's me right here. <laughs> Sergeant... Uh, Brother C.S. Harvey right here, all right. And uh, Private Tommy Carter over here. Private Carter, all right. And then in our Army, we have General Gail Walls, all right. Sergeant Harold B. Carney and Private Edward Clayton, all right. Everybody's present and accounted for tonight. Isn't that wonderful? All right, Sunday school teachers being faithful, that's wonderful. Now, the commander in the Brigadier General, yeah, yeah that one uh, tonight is Gail Walls, my wife. And she'll come up here, and I'll... Come here. I want to salute you, lady. <laughs> she did a good job. All right, thank you. Does that mean point your head? Look at there. Where's your name? Right there. 5,000, good. Yeah, good, all right. Okay. The Lord's good to us. Thank you for you helping in the Sunday School campaign because it's a way of having fun, but also of working and getting the job done. We have one more week to go, and uh, someone else will be the Commander-in-Chief next week, uh, Brigadier General, General, and we look forward to that. Okay, Karen, you need to say something, don't you? Okay, this morning we might have either left your name off the list, or maybe you didn't hear it because she went through it so fast. And if you have been a worker in the uh, nurseries downstairs, just see me after church because I do have your gift certificate, and we do thank you very much, and we don't want to miss anybody. All right. Thank you. Thank you. God bless our nursery workers, the folks that labor so late. Our young men are going to come take the offering tonight. Brother Brad Raby, come here and pray for us. Before I pray, I just want to say uh, I thank God for that new French restaurant, Olive Springs Hardini's. Go ahead and break. <laughs> Dear Lord, I want to thank you for your blessing you giving us this day. I, I want to thank you for the beautiful day, Lord. I want to thank you for the good service we had this morning, Lord, the decisions made, Lord. And we'll thank you, Lord, for how our Sunday school campaign's going, Lord. 
Mm-hmm. I'll tell our tennis, Lord. I, want, I pray, Lord, tonight for uh, Brother Wallace who brings the message, Lord, and I pray for our missionaries. Mm-hmm. I pray, Lord, for those that are struggling right now, Lord, that uh, may be in danger of losing their job, Lord. Mm. I pray, God, that you'll give them strength, Lord, and help them to uh, seek you. And uh, I ask, Lord, that you'll bless this offering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you give. Children who want to put money in our missions offering or say a scripture verse or do either or both can come now. We'll do that tonight. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Mm. I'm only listening to say his son. All right. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. Amen. 1 Peter 2.24, um, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose, by whose stripes ye were healed. Amen. Good. The B-I-B-L-D is dead before me. I stand upon the will of God. The B-I-B-L-D Bible. Matthew 5, 3, and 4. Blessed are, blessed are the poor. Blessed are. Matthew 5, 34? 3 and 4. Oh, okay. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are. Poor in spirit. Poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Good. Good comeback. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. Amen. All right, honey, you ready? My surprise, I don't want to make me lie down and grow patch. It's even making me a stale All right. Okay, wait a second. John. 
twenty thirty one. These are written that he might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and unto and that believing. That believing he mm-hmm. might have left through his name. Amen. Good, good. John fifteen five. He is the vine and we are the branches. All right, good. Romans six twenty three. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ our Jesus Christ our Lord. All right, good. Isaiah 40, verse 8, The grass withereth, the flowers fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. That's good. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures he restoreth my soul. Amen. Good. We got one more. One more. You ready here, honey? Come on. Okay, good, good. Oh. Let's give them all a good hand, all right? Take your Bibles and turn to Nehemiah chapter 4 tonight. Nehemiah chapter 4. This is the third Sunday night we've been there. I do know another book in the Bible. (laughs) Nehemiah chapter 4. The children may go to their classes tonight. Okay. If you've not found it by now, just act like you have. (laughs) Nehemiah chapter 4. Leona?
Chapter 4, please. If you'll stand with me, we'll read six verses, and then you can, we'll have prayer, and you can be seated. If you're unable to stand, you may remain seated. But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we had built the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish which are burned? Now to buy the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn the reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. Cover not their iniquity, let not their sins be blotted out from before thee, for they provoked thee to anger before the builders. So builded we the wall, and all the wall was joined together, the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. Father, give us power. May the Spirit of God rest upon us for good. Give us an option that only comes from you. Help us to honor you and to please you. Speak to every heart, I pray in Jesus' name, with thanksgiving. Amen. Be seated, please. <clears throat> Allow me just one more time tonight to refresh your minds about the story of Nehemiah. Nehemiah's been taken captive, and he's over in the land of Babylon. While in the land of Babylon, he hears the news about his hometown and how the gates are destroyed, the city lays in waste. God speaks to his heart. And through God speaking to his hearts and the providence of God, Nehemiah goes back to his own hometown to rebuild the walls that are wasted. Upon going back to his hometown, when he arrives there, as we read their text in its context, he goes out one night, he goes underneath some gates that are broken down, and he sees these stones of this building, if you can imagine the massive stones and where they've burned Maybe like it be Ruth, Adam, and Tommy, that day you went home and saw your house engulfed and all of it had gone and just piled up in rubbish. And uh, seeing it there, noticing where it had been destroyed and rubbish was piled up around it, he decided he wanted to build. He had all kinds of difficulties. Uh, Sanballat and Tobiah didn't want him to build, so they mocked him and made fun of him. The people that worked together, who were supposed to work together, had fusses with each other that they weren't treated right in the work that was all taking place. And Nehemiah looked at that heap of rubbish and these that standing on the outside said this, shall he revive the stones from the heaps of rubbish? That was the question. Are they ever going to be able to take all that's been folded in the past, all that's happened in the past, all the disgrace, all the destruction, will they ever be able to reach into that rubbish pile and pick everything up again and rebuild us the question? And the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2 that our lives are, we're like buildings. We're living stones in the building of God. And oftentimes in our lives, we have walls that get broken down in our lives. We have stones that get piled up in our lives. We get things in our lives that we need to, that sometimes lay in the rubbish heap that shouldn't be there. Then we need to ask our question, or the question we need to ask us is this. Are the stones in the heaps of rubbish, 
worth reviving. And I gave you eight things so far, I believe eight or nine, and I'm going to give you four more tonight, and I'll give them to you briefly. And here's what I've mentioned, some stones that are worth reviving out of the heaps of rubbish. I'll mention them. All I'll do is mention them quickly. Number one, I said the stone of redemption was worth, was worth redeeming, or excuse me, reviving out of the heaps of rubbish. We still breathe our salvation by grace in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Always have, always will. And then we also talk about the stone of redemption, or excuse me, the stone of revelation. We believe that this is God's book He's given us for time and eternity. For us, God's given us a book we have. We don't have to wonder about it. This is God's book. This is the mighty oak that stood in the mountains of eternity and wrapped its roots around the rock of ages and has stood all the winds and adversity of time and still standing today. This is God's book for us in this hour. The stone of revelation. We talk about the stone of refreshment and give you an illustration of the rock in the wilderness where that the water came out of the rock and there is a place where the children of God can refresh their self and it's worth reviving in the mist. We've talked about the stone of reaching others with the gospel of Christ, how important it is. We spoke of the stone of rebuilding your own lives, how important it is. And, and every one of us here, if we'd be honest with ourselves, uh, the story of our lives is this. We build a while, we get knocked down, and we build again. <laughs> you get knocked down, you build again. And one way, if you ever want to get the building finished, is just don't quit building on it. Amen? A success is somebody that gets up one more time than they fall down. You remember that. Okay, it's never somebody's never fallen. You just keep getting up one more time than you fall down. The stone of rebuilding. The stone of remembrance. And so many illustrations I gave you about that. It's good to recall what God has done. We talked about the stone of rejoicing. And then I closed up last week of the stone of reliance. And told you about 1,680 jobs being lost at our plants. And told you that in this hour, you certainly need to rely upon God and upon the leadership of the Spirit of God for your lives. And now I want to mention just a few other stones tonight that I feel like are worth reviving out of the heaps of rubbish. Number one, I'll mention that as a stone of requesting. If there's ever a stone in the heap of rubbish, it's the stone of requesting or praying to God. Probably one of the most important stones, if I could use that illustration again, in your life, is the stone of requesting or praying. Let me tell you why I say that. Because the Bible says, you have not because you ask not. Every failure in life is a prayer failure. You have not because you ask not. And what happens, this stone of requesting gets heaps of rubbish around it. I'll prove it to you. I'm too busy. I've got too many other things to do. More things are important than prayer. And rubbish gets piled up around your prayer life. I honestly can say, for pastoring for 30 years and trying to preach for 30 years, that the hardest thing for me to have is have a consistent, effectual prayer life. Something always interrupting it. Something's always trying to take my time. And having a good prayer life. And it's a very hard thing. One of the, one, and you'll have to admit with me, one of the hardest things for your family to do, I promise you, I know this, one of the hardest things for your family to do is have time to pray together. One of the hardest things. You've got time for this. You may have time for that. But getting a time because there, there's something about prayer. We know that, that prayer does not change God's mind, but it moves heaven and earth. Let me tell you something, folks. People say, I've tried that before. It doesn't work. God doesn't care. The problem's too big. But I want to tell you, Jeremiah 33, 3 is still in the book. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Amen. I still rejoice that uh, 30, 22 years ago, 23 years ago, come this May, Mount Pisgah Baptist Church started the printing ministry on that verse of Scripture of calling to me, I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. I'm talking about praying. I'm talking about getting a hold of God. That's what Nehemiah did. If I had time tonight, which I don't, if you look in chapter 1, you'd read about Nehemiah. He prayed for four months requesting he'd have, that God would give him favor with the king so he could go back to his homeland. He prayed and he wept with fasting before God. He prayed and he wept. He prayed for his people. He prayed for his strength. He prayed for the glory of God. He prayed and he prayed and he prayed. I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, listen to what I'm going to tell you, and I'll say it two or three, three, two, two or three times tonight. Regard none beyond the reach of prayer. Regard no problem too great for a prayer hearing God. Amen. Regard nothing un, un, that's not, regard nothing has been unable to be reached by prayer. In the heaps of rubbish, this stone is worth reviving. 10,000 times 10,000, I say yes, it's worth reviving. Because he said, 
He that cometh to me must believe that I am, and I'm a reward of them that diligently seek me. Prayer. Let me give you an illustration, since we're talking about stones. Is in, in Exodus 17, there's a story. I want you to listen to this. This will help us. In Exodus 17. And what's happened, Joshua, who is the new leader, is going to be the new leader uh, eventually, is in the valley. He's fighting with the Amalekites. And he's fighting. And Moses is on top of the mountain, and he's praying for him. And he's on a stone, resting upon a stone. And Moses has got his hand stretched toward heaven. And as he's holding his hand stretched toward heaven, I don't know if you've ever done that very long, but there's something happens when your hands are stretched out. In a matter of minutes or less, they get heavy. And they start doing this just automatically. While Moses has got his hands up and he's praying, Joshua's winning the battle. But when his hands get weary and they start to come down, Joshua gets to losing the battle. So what happened? Aaron gets on one side of him and Hur gets on the other side of him and they push his arms up and they hold him up till God gives the victory. <laughs> See, that's the stone of requesting. If any two on earth agree as touching anything, it'd be none of you my Father which is in heaven. The stone of requesting. Requesting from God, pleading with God, don't give up on prayer. Lifting up holy hands everywhere. That's the illustration. Look in First Timothy chapter two. I only have four of these things I'll give you tonight. First Timothy chapter two with me just for a second. And let me just admonish you about prayer just for a second. First Timothy chapter two. Find that with me. I'm looking for it. You can look for it too. First Timothy chapter two. Let me let me just read these verses to you. First Timothy chapter two, verse one. I exhort therefore that, tell me those next three words. First of all, here's the very first practice we should do. Supplication, prayers, intercession, and come on, and giving of thanks be made for all men. When we read that sometime, we'll say, now, God didn't really mean that. <laughs> but you know what? When Paul wrote that, one of the most ungodly men was the ruler of that time named Nero. Most ungodly, one of the most ungodly. If you read the history of his life, you think, how in the world did he ever get to be a leader? The violence he did to his own family to rise to leadership. He said, but you pray. Listen, he said, he said, pray for kings and for all that in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. But the fact is, he said, I want you to learn to pray. The stone of requesting is worth reviving out of the heaps, out of the rubbish heap. Amen? Second thing. Look in Matthew chapter 27. The stone of resurrection. The stone of resurrection. Matthew 27, verse number 60. Matthew 27, verse 60. I have this in written down. I usually don't write them down. I have this in written down. Matthew 27, 60. I'll give you a second to find it. I want you to see it. We know that Christ was buried. He was placed in a tomb. He was buried. And the Bible says this, talking about a stone. And they laid it, and they laid his body, that's what it's talking about, in, in, his, own, in an own, his own new tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, which he had hewn out of the rock, and he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher, and they departed. You got it? They've rolled the stone from the sepulcher. Look in Matthew 27, verse 66. Now the soldiers had told them that somebody's going to come and steal him away and they need to make sure it doesn't happen. So Pilate gave them an order, said you do all you can. Look at verse 66 of Matthew 27. So they went, they made the sepulcher sure, they sealed the stone and they set a watch. They put the seal of the, of the king upon it, a pile upon it. Don't you touch this, you're in trouble. But look at chapter 28, verse number two. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and he set upon it the stone of, re of, re of, re of, re of resurrection. Let me tell you something. God didn't have to move that stone. He could have left it there because Jesus had the ability in his resurrected body to walk through a wall. He had no problem walking through a stone. But he wanted to be a testimony of the fact he arose to all those that came there. I read an article one time that, you know, with all the chemical things we have or all the things we have in scientific advancement, that they can dig somebody's body up and they can look at it and they can say, well, this is so-and-so and they was this old, here's how tall they was, all that stuff. All they can do, find your DNA. I mean, from thousands of years, you're a goner, but you're still here in a sense. And it said that some British chemist came to the tomb of Jesus 
and they took everything they could get from it that was loose that they could get and they examined it and they came up with this conclusion that nobody ever, ever, ever saw corruption in that tomb. We could have saved them a lot of money. Amen? Because Jesus said, he said, I'll not see corruption. But he arose, the stone of resurrection. You see, because there's a lot of rubbish around it. We have those that say that someone stole him away. We have the liberals that believe that he never really resurrected bodily. It was just a spiritual event. And then we have those that say he never really died. He just swooned off somewhere and went out of one tomb to another. And now he's buried somewhere. That's all rubbish, ladies and gentlemen. Because I want to tell you, on the third and appointed morning, the word of God said that the Son of God arose from the dead. We sing the song, Lo, in the grave he lay, Jesus my Savior. Waiting the, the coming day, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose the victor from the great domain. He lives forever with the saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Someone said it is important. I beg, your, I beg to differ with you. The cornerstone of all of our faith is based on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because I want to tell you, if Jesus Christ did not resurrect from the grave, we are yet in our sins. And our loved ones that have died before us, those three funerals I had last week and tried to comfort people, those people have perished. If there be no resurrection from the dead, we have no hope whatsoever. But thank God, but now is Christ risen from the dead. He's become the first fruit of them that slept. And thank God we have a living Savior. He was dead. He is alive. He's alive forevermore. And by the way, if in this life only we had hope of Christ Jesus, we'd be of all men most miserable. That's not the case. He arose, he arose, the stone of resurrection. There's another stone. Let me mention to you tonight, not only the stone of requesting, the stone of resurrection is the stone of returning. Look in Daniel chapter 2 with me. Find Daniel chapter 2. Now, I want you to see this. It'll take you a second. Go past the book of Ezekiel and come to Daniel chapter 2. <clears throat> Daniel chapter 2. And if you'll briefly let me just uh, tell you about it. Daniel chapter 2. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And the New Agers can't tell him the interpretation of it. <laughs> Amen. Let's face the facts. They may know about the past, but they know nothing about the future. The reason they know about the past, they have a demonic influence as they speak with them. Demons have lived all this time. And so what has happened is that, Daniel, that Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and he saw this vision of a head of gold and silver and then down at the end he sees the ten toes with the iron and clay. And Nebuchadnezzar's troubles, his vision troubles him. And he doesn't want to tell the soothsayers anything about the dream because he knows they'll make up a lie and tell him a lie. So he begins to pray for an interpretation and they send out a decree that all the magicians and soothsayers and all those people are going to be killed. And so Daniel feared for his life and Daniel began to pray. And they came to Daniel and said, Daniel, your life is in danger of being taken. He said, tell the king, keep his shirt on. That's a loose interpretation. He said, give me time to pray. And Daniel prayed. And if you'll read verse, I believe verse 22, he said, when he, when, he, when he prayed, he said, you tell the king, there is a God in heaven and he knows everything and he knows what's going to happen in the future. Now listen to me. And what's going to happen, look in Daniel chapter 2 verse 35. Then was the iron and the clay, the brass, the silver and the gold broke to pieces together and became like the shaft of the summer threshing floor and the wind carried them away, and no place was found for them. That's that image, that rock hit. And the stone that smote the image, the stone of returning, that hit the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. And the story is that stone rolled out of the mountain is symbolic of the kingdom of God, that Jesus Christ is going to come back again. He's going to destroy the kingdoms of this world, and he's going to set up his own kingdom one of these days. When he comes back, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ is coming again. There's a lot of rubbish about that. Jehovah's Witness say it came back in 1914. We know better than that. Matter of fact, they've had him coming back seven times and missed it all seven times. We don't know when he's coming, but we know he is coming. We, know, we, we believe he's coming soon. And I believe it's sooner than we, I think it's sooner than it's, and we know it's quicker than it's, it's ever been before because of the way that the time is moving. You know, 
around heaps of rubbish. So some people say, well, he'll come back when I die. That's not the second coming of Christ. You say, well, one of these days, we're just going to go to heaven. And that, no, he's coming back, folks. Jesus Christ is coming back one of these days. He's coming back visibly. You're going to be able to see him. He's coming back personally. That same Jesus you see taken up is coming in like manner. If it's not the same Jesus, the Bible's not truth. It's the same Jesus. He's going to have nail prints in his hand. He'll have a ribbon side. They'll look up on him when they pierce. He's coming back again. Brother Harvey and I was talking the other day. And uh, it's amazing. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter number 38, there's an alignment of nations. And you know what's, what's interesting about where you and I are living, this age where you and I are living in? And we know that's after the rapture of the church of alignments of nations, the battle of, of what we call the battle of Gog and Magog. But all those nations are starting to line up. Let me just show you three of them real quick. Ethiopia, which is Afghanistan now. Someone says, well, we don't have anything to worry about from these nations. What if all these nations got together? Let me, let me give you a little scenario. Say Afghanistan, which they have, and Russia and Persia, which is Iran. They're all in, they're all in alliance right now. Let me show you what great power they have right now. Okay, let me show you what great power they have. Number one, Afghanistan or Ethiopia has manpower. Would you agree with that? Half a million people in Rwanda died. Did not even shock them one bit. They've got manpower. Would you, would you say that's correct? Russia has mechanical power. Russia may, may, but Russia's not destroyed their nuclear weapons and stuff like we have, ladies and gentlemen. We've, de, we've depleted ours and some of ours. They've not taken care of theirs. And they've still got the power to cause a, 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 a catastrophe to this world, ladies and gentlemen. They have the mechanical power to do it. Afghanistan has the manpower. Russia, uh, Gog and Magog in, in Ezekiel 38, has the, has the machine power. Iran or Persia in Ezekiel 38, Iran has the money power. Would you agree with me with that? They're confederate. They're there now. I'm just telling you that all I know is this, that I believe with all my heart this book teaches me that Jesus Christ is coming soon. I believe with all my heart. You know what? I believe Jesus meant it when he said, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go prepare a place for you, and if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I'll receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. You know, let me, let me show you. You know what the coming of Jesus Christ does to us? It's one of the most wonderful truths of the Bible. I'm serious, it is. Now, we're to look for him to come, but we're to love his appearing. We're to love it. We're to, we're to pray as John prayed. And boy, listen, that's hard sometimes. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. But we're to love His coming. And you know, and sometimes it's hard for me with, with young people because I say, all my life to live preacher and I don't want to leave this world now and I can understand that. Or you maybe you just had a, a baby born to you. You think, well, I, I, I just don't want to understand that. I just don't want to have to leave life. And, and here's, here's these kids and here's all these things before us. But you know, the wonderful teaching on the second coming is this for us, ladies and gentlemen. It gives us courage in the day you and I live. I'll tell you something. Anything you're going through could end the next second. Hmm. Is that right? Jesus Christ could come. See, whatever I may face, he's going, I have courage because I'm going, to, I'm going to face God one of these days. I have courage. He's going to come. You understand that? It gives me faith to believe. It lets, you know why I'm working? You know why I'm working? I've pastored, like I said, for 30 years, and I've worked harder this last week, I've guessed, in seemingly in 30 years. Had three funerals this week. I preached two nights in Crossville. Preached at a college on, uh, on Friday. Uh, had a couple's retreat this weekend. I didn't do a lot there. I was responsible for things getting done there. All my duties here, I took care of all the visitation I did. You know why I'm laboring? Because I believe Jesus Christ is coming soon. And I want to be busy when he comes. I want to dive him up. I want to go up with my boots on. Someone has said, I'm not looking for the undertaker. I'm looking for the uptaker. Amen. The returning of the Lord Jesus Christ. Something else it does, let me just mention closely, and I'll be for the next five minutes. There'll be some things you'd fess up. You'd probably ask that brother or sister to forgive you for some things. You might even pay somebody that money you owe them. I'm smiling. If you knew he's coming back in a few minutes. Now, you don't know that he's not. He may not wait a few minutes. That burden you got wouldn't be so heavy if you knew that. And the fact of the matter is, it could be the very truth. Here's the last thing. It's the stone of raining. 
I speak about the stone of requesting, the stone of resurrection, the stone of returning, the stone of reigning. One of these days we believe, we believe here, we believe the Bible teaches us, and looking at Daniel chapter 2, verses 44 and 45, you'll see why we teach this. Daniel 2, one of the reasons. Same, same vision that Nebuchadnezzar had, Daniel giving the interpretation, Daniel 2, 44. In those days of these, of these kings, those 10 kings of the latter times, there's 13 kings in the European pure common market right now. Three of those kings, according to Revelation, are going to be destroyed. There'll be ten kings in the Confederacy when Jesus comes a second time. Isn't that interesting? Thirteen kings. Three is going to be destroyed. Makes a total of ten. Ten toed creature. Listen. Which shall never be destroyed. He's going to set up a king which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to the other people, but it shall be break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. It shall stand forever. Now listen. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountains without hands, that it breaketh in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, the interpretation there is this year. Here's what he's saying. He said that God's kingdom is going to be a kingdom over this entire world one of these days. God's going to set up his kingdom. Is there anything in the New Testament to, to uh, validify that? Well, look in Revelation chapter 20. Let me give you those verses and I'll be through. Revelation 20. I got my landing gear down. What does that mean? Good. Nothing. All right, good. Yeah. I'm headed toward the airport. What does that mean? Crash. Crash landing. That's right. Revelation chapter 20. I want you to know, folks, I don't like you all either. Revelation chapter 20, uh, verse number 1. You hurt me when you talk to me like that. Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. Someone says the book of Revelation, literal, literal or figurative? And the answer is yes. Sure is. It's literal, it's literal when it's literal and it's figurative when it's figurative. When God said it's going to happen, it's going to happen just like God said it. When God says it's like that, it means it's like that. Listen to what God said. And I saw an angel, Revelation 20 verse 1, I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Thank God for this. He laid hold on the, dra the dragon, that old servant which is Satan, is the devil and Satan. God wanted to make sure you knew who he was talking about and he bound him a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up. And he rest, set a seal upon him. He should not deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given to them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads and in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Is that what he said? But the rest of the dead live not again till the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. They shall be priests of God and Christ and shall reign with him for a thousand years. Six times God said it. Six times God said it. We're gonna, he's going to come back. He's going to set up a kingdom on this earth that's going to rule and he's going to reign. Now, uh, now, there's too many questions to answer. What are we going to be doing during that time? Too many questions to answer in this. We know from God's Word what He's going to do. Now, if, if I could just, if I could, if I could just give you this. I wish when you get home tonight, and you, if you'll take time to do it, I wish you'd read Isaiah 35. I wish you'd read Isaiah 35 because it talks about what it's going to be like in that kingdom reign. You'll go out to gather a rose and there won't be any thorn on the bushes. Isaiah 11 says there'll be peace in the valley. That song you sing, that's peace in the valley song. It's talking about the millennial reign of Christ. The lion shall lay down by the lamb. He don't lay down beside him now. The lamb lays down inside the lamb now. Right? He'll lay down beside him. A child will play up on the hole of an asp or a poisonous snake. Uh, a animals will be, go back to vegetation instead of eating each other because they'll, the, the, they'll, eat, they'll eat straw. All those things in God's holy mount because God's going to rule upon the earth. He's going to reign. I believe that with all my heart. God's going to do that. Now, let me ask you a question, and I'm through. I'm through again. It's the third time I'm through. Stones, heaps of rubbish, are they worth reviving? The answer is yes. Did those people revive the stones? If you look at verse 6, they did, because the Bible says they, they builded the wall under the half thereof. In other words, one group started on that end, one on that end. They came to the middle, and they met. And the reason they did it, listen to me now, the reason they did it is the people had a mind to work. Did you know what? Thank God. Every day of my life, I do this, every day of my life, is I take time to thank God for the people who voluntarily give their time. Listen to me, folks. 
We would not have one thing at this church if it wasn't for people like you that give of your time and your talents and your treasure. How many Sunday school classes can I teach? How many chairs can I fill in the... Well, well let's not say that. <laughs> That's not nice. Well, thank you, Larry. Well, the answer is one. <laughs> you don't know how that hurts me. <laughs> how many organs can I play at one time? None. <laughs> I'm getting in deeper, all right? <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is you're a bunch of smart Alex. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is this. <laughs> <laughs> liars and everything else. This morning we had cheats and liars. Remember this morning, all a bunch of cheaters and liars. <laughs> Get me back. But with you doing it, with you doing it, <laughs> we can do things. How many buses can I drive? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Out of mind to work. Let me tell you something. Closing again. They had a mind that was set to work. This next statement I'm going to make in the next minute and a half is, is worth you coming tonight. I want you to hear it. They didn't have a mind that was set on destruction. They didn't have a mind that was set on the problems. They had a mind that was set on the work. People of, of Nehemiah had to learn to forgive each other because they had argued with each other. And while they were working, they got to fussing among themselves. Now listen to me, folks. Listen to me. I want you to hear this. I don't know if it's original or not, but I thought it today. The best place for the past is in the past. Did you hear me? The best place for the past is in the past. If it's there, don't go digging it up. That's a good point not to stop on. Don't be a buzzard Baptist. Always flying around looking for a dead something. Is that a buzzard Baptist? Always flying and looking for something dead they won't pick up. I was preaching, and I got to tell this story because I thought of it. I was preaching in Derry, Pennsylvania. And I said, Don't be a buzzard Baptist. That's what I said. And everybody just roared. They just roared. I thought, Well, it wasn't that funny. I said, I bet I said something wrong. So I said, I'll correct it. I preached a few more minutes and I said, don't be a buzzard Baptist. And man, they roared. That preacher got me by the coat and he said, the preacher said, we got a family back there, our last name's Buzzards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't you be a buzzard Baptist. Let the past be the past. Forgive each other. Get on with work. Have a mind to work. Let's get it done. Amen? Amen? Our heads are about, our eyes are closed. I was looking around for a few minutes. Let me ask you three or four questions and we'll pray. We'll have a baptismal service. How's your prayer life? That's what I want to ask you. Who is that person tonight when I said don't give up on them in prayer? You need to pray for tonight. Before they start playing on the instruments. If you want to slip out of your seat and start coming, there's somebody here you are to pray for tonight. You slip out of your seat. Or someone you need to pray for, you slip out of your seat. You can come on now. Who is that person that you, you've almost given up on? But tonight, the stone is worth reviving in heaps of rubbish. You want to come and ask God, what is that situation you're in? It's worth praying over, folks. It's worth asking God about. I promise you this. It's worth asking God about. What about resurrection? Have you forgot about it? God is alive and real. You need to revive that stone out of the heaps of rubbish tonight. Are you looking for his coming? Some things you'd do tonight if you knew he were coming. Is there somebody you'd go to and tell him you love him, ask him to forgive you? Hey, listen. If you'll live in the light of his coming again, it'll sure change your life. Look up, folks. Redemption draweth nigh. Our Lord's coming.
Do you hear? Let me ask you a question now. How many would raise their hand and say, Pastor, I'm grateful that I'm saved. I know Christ lives in my heart. Would you raise your hand up high just for a second? If, it's good to, if you're glad you're saved, I want you to say amen. amen. It's good to know Christ, isn't it? Across this room, if you could not raise your hand that you know you're saved, you're not sure if you died, you'd go to heaven, not sure if Christ come, you'd go be with him, you ought to be saved tonight. If you'll come, we'll take the word of God and we'll show you how you can be saved, how you can know it before you leave this room tonight. If you'll come, I'll meet you here. We'll pray with you. We'll get that settled. I want you to come. You need to come pray for somebody, pray for yourself. You need to come be saved. I want you to come. They're going to play for us on the instruments while folks are, still, folks are here, still praying. You need to come. Sit out of your seat while we're waiting just a moment. You come on while we're waiting. Folks are kneeling at their seats, different places you can kneel. The back of that pew, you can make an altar. You need to talk with God about something. You talk with Him. You talk to Him now about it. Regard none beyond the reach of prayer. Regard no problem too great for God to solve. to trust Christ tonight you come on let's take care of that matter of business in your heart and your life someone may say you act like it's just a matter of doing it it is because he's already done all the work if you'll trust him he'll save you would you come listen closer now here tonight and you're going to get baptized I want you to come if you're here and you've been saved but you never made public at a church service what Christ has done for you but you need to make public you've been saved I want you to come if this is the church family that your family will be a part of this church family tonight I want you to come we're going to stand together and sing a verse of a song as we stand and sing the verse of this song you come on if you need to keep coming you keep on coming let's sing just as Your better eyes are closed. Everyone's praying. One more verse, they'll play for us. If you need to come, you come. Step out of your seat. Now's the time. Let's get it done. Now's the time to do it. Let's do it. Come on, sir. Come on, ma'am. Young person. be seated please stay with us for the baptismal service it'll just take us just a few minutes let's turn in our song books please 143 
see Laura get baptized tonight. Stand up. Some folks come see her get baptized tonight. Jamie's back here, of course. Hey, man, we're grateful you came. Laura Beth, you know this already. Already told you. Hold on here. Real quick. The Lord loves you. You're special to him. I'm grateful you got saved. You're special to us and our church family. We want to tell you we love you. Amen. Laura Beth, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism. Risen to walk in this little life. All right. Good job. All right. Good. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Amen. We'll give her time to change and I'll be right out. Let's get to verse 3. Perfect submission. All is at tonight and the congregational singing we sang some new songs tonight that uh, maybe just practice a little bit did a good job didn't they Amen. I want to thank you for practicing and doing a good job on those all right let me just tell you about a few things while our Beth's getting ready and coming out we want to remind you that the Billy, Billy Kelly tapes are in if you want those uh, not the preaching tapes the laughter tapes <laughs> that he made check the bulletin for any important announcements concerning young people singles activities and uh, we also have a deacons meeting at your church tonight just for a few minutes. need to remind the deacons. And I would not miss Thursday morning service. Any way possibly I could be here. 9.30 to 10.30 on Thursday morning on Thanksgiving Day. As far as I'm concerned, it's one of the best services, if not the best service of the year. If you're able to be here, you are to come. We're not, we won't keep you but an hour. And uh, you don't have to stay that long if you don't want to. But I want you to come. Next Sunday. What is next Sunday? Anybody know? Anniversary. I've been your pastor for 14 years. Isn't that amazing how much y'all can put up with me? <laughs> and we have about five people want to get baptized that Sunday that I know about already, and we're thankful for that, and we look forward to that. And then let me remind you, uh, there was in a, a sample ballot in the bulletin. You need to look at that, and praying about people being as deacons and serving on building his grounds for the next three years. And uh, so be sure and look at that. And then also, what's going to happen on December the... 15th. Who's going to be with us? David Ring. just David Ring is going to be here. And the service is going to start at 1030 that morning. Sunday school 10 to 1025. The morning preach service at 1030. Be on time. We're going to have uh, chairs out. We're going to have an uh, uh, overflow room in the basement with the uh, TVs set up and everything. We will have the largest crowd we've ever had at our church. So I want you to be faithful. Encourage people to come. You'll be here. You don't want to miss it. It's a blessed day. I promise you. Laura Beth, we're happy for you. We're glad you did that. We sure are. God bless you. Let's stand to our feet. We've had a good day. Now, after you get, when we get through praying, I want you to come by, and I want you to shake hands and rejoice with uh, this family and thank God about Laura Beth getting baptized. Amen. Brother Harvey, why don't you come and pray for us tonight? Father, we are grateful for your blessings to us this day, Father, for the joy of seeing uh, loved ones follow the, uh, follow the Lord Jesus in baptism. We thank you for the preached word, for the songs that's been sung, for the every effort that's been put forth for your kingdom. We ask, Father, that you would honor it.
Father, meet every need of all of our hearts and lives. We ask that you will help us, if you delay your coming, to live this week for thee. And Lord, that you would create within all of us a clean heart and a right spirit. Father, we pray for our church and our church family, especially those who are bereaved tonight, who have buried loved ones in the last few days. We ask that you would meet their special need, Father, and be near to them, and Lord, and bless their hearts. For Christ's sake we pray. Amen. Amen.